Television have some important advice to share, but it's advice, advice we hope that none of us ever has to take. But sadly, more families than we may realize have to deal with suicide. Carol Cashin lost her son to suicide three years ago. She wants to help other families cope after losing a loved one in such a tragic way. She's worked with Dr. Stan Kutcher, who's the Sun Life Financial Chair in Adolescent Mental Health, and together they have developed this information booklet to help loved ones cope after a youth takes his or her own life. So we welcome, first of all, Carolyn. And let me just say thank you very much for being so brave to come on our show and discuss such a sensitive topic after such a tragic loss. Thank you for doing that. You're welcome, Crystal. Now, why did you want to help out with this project? Uh, I mainly wanted to help out with this project uh, because of what I was going through at the time. There was very little resources available to me at the time of my son's passing. So I immediately knew that if I was having such a difficult time, others were as well. Yeah, that was very brave, and it is helpful. Um, I, Dr. Kutch, I want to bring you in now. What, I guess, how common is suicide among youth? Well, it's the second or third leading cause of death among youth. So it's still relatively rare, but one suicide is one suicide too many. Well, it's true, and I think second or third cause that, that it may be rare, but that's still quite quite common. And I know when I was talking about people with this subject, many people were coming forward saying that they'd had experiences in their family, but it's just not something they discussed before. That's been absolutely true. Suicide is a stigma, ta taboo. Uh, it's an issue that we have to deal with. It's something that can be prevented, and we have to all work hard together to actually do that. Well, if it does happen in your family, I, I would imagine that it would be, you just wouldn't know where to turn right away. So something, knowing that something like this is available to, to help people must be a bit of a comfort to you, certainly, and, and for anyone watching. Tell us a little bit about what this book is intended to do. Okay. The main intention of that book is for um, survivors of suicide. So it would be families, and it would be friends, and it would be actually a whole community that are affected by suicide. So the book is intended to give um, simple advice, and also it, it relates or it alludes to some uh, resources that are available in the HRM. Um, definitely the book is going to be made available across Canada as well, but the main reason of having this is for the first responders to also have something that they could give to families. Instead of just leaving them, there is a resource uh, left for them. And well, that's helpful. I want the, the, some of the excerpts from the book are being shown on your screen right now. And notice how simple and direct the statements are. Now, these quotes are full quotes. And of course, it's always helpful to be surrounded by people who've been through the, the same experience that you have. But some of the pages that just demonstrate advice, they're very clear. It's sort of larger print. And the statements are simple. And I'm gathering that this is on purpose because I would imagine if you're going through a devastating loss like that, your emotions must be just so intense that it would be hard to concentrate and digest a lot of information. Is that true? Definitely, Crystal. Um, words can't even describe what you're going through at the time. And definitely that book being written the way it has been um, definitely is easy to read. Uh, you can pick it up at any time throughout the whole process of grieving. But uh, yeah, definitely. It's and it can help you, the resources in the back, it could help you probably reach out to others who may have been through what you've been through, and I'm sure that would be a tremendous amount of comfort. Yes. For Did sure. reaching out to others help you in your Oh, definitely. Process? That's what helps. And that's one thing I do want to say is speaking about suicide, talking, um, allowing others to talk about it is, is so important, and it helps to reduce stigma related to it. So, Now, Dr. Kutcher, if, if you know someone, like a loved one, who's dealing with a loved one who's, who's taken his or her own life, how can you support that person? Because I know sometimes you're a little bit nervous about just how to broach the subject or just how you can even kind of reach out to them without being insensitive. How, how do you do that? I think the first thing you realize is that somebody who has lost a family member by death through suicide is hurting, is going through all the emotions that you would have if you lost a family member to any other cause. Their problem is magnified because society has a taboo around it. And I think it's absolutely essential that we recognize that these things happen. There is nothing abnormal, unusual, horrible about somebody committing suicide, dying by suicide. And we need to be clear and supportive to everybody, just as if it was someone that died of a heart attack or someone that died in a motor vehicle accident. Uh, and it's that kind of solid, reasonable support that helps people. Sure. And I'm sure when they're feeling that 
that lonely that just somebody reaching out to them especially someone they trust and care for that would only make things better Absolutely. I would imagine all right so I want you to tell us a little bit about where you can get this booklet now that it's available okay. the booklets available in 60 agencies across HRM right now um, the Halifax Regional Police have been very supportive and all the vehicles um, have the minute so um, any families that uh, are suffering after a suicide, they will receive copies of this. It's also available in recreation centers at First Nation communities across rural Nova Scotia. Um, uh, Canadian Mental Health Association has copies. Uh, all the hospitals, okay. IWK. So throughout the province and eventually, eventually the rest of the country. Wonderful. I know this book is dedicated in the memory of your son Adam. So yes, it, is it is nice that you're able to make something good come out of something that must have been so difficult. So thank Absolutely. you so much for doing that. You're very welcome. And Crystal. thank you for coming in, Dr. Kuchu. We appreciate your your help with this as well. Thank you for having us. Now I wanted to let people know where they can find the book. There's a website on your screen, teenmentalhealth.org. You can turn to that for information on where you can find copies of this booklet and you can also find other resources there to help you open up a discussion about suicide or help someone that you know who may be dealing with a loss of someone they love. So we're going to take a little break right now. It's been almost three years since Adam Cashin took his own life. His mother remembers it like it was yesterday, the immediate sense of loss, made worse because there wasn't any support available for her, something she has vowed to change for others. Here's Elizabeth Chu. The meaning behind the photo is uh, at the time you feel like you're in a fog and um, this depicts that fog. Carol Cashin says that, her um, fog of grief um, lasted for about a year after her son Adam's suicide. The Tantalan teenager died three years ago. He was 19. Carol needed support in those first horrible hours and there was none. Looking back I think of the RCMP that came to my home. If they would have had a resource like this to even be able to hand, hand to me. It would have made their job a whole lot easier because I know it wasn't easy for them to have to leave um, me with nothing. In part because suicide is still a taboo subject. So finding help to deal with her anguish was even more difficult. It's like a roller coaster of, of feelings. You, you, at first, like I said, that shock and then you're blaming yourself and the guilt and, and definitely the whys. Last year, this mother in mourning started to write and research about her experience. I would have understood more that my feelings were very common feelings at that time. Um, definitely, I, I think my healing would have been a whole lot quicker. Her booklet is called Support After Youth Suicide, a resource guide that's urgently needed. Suicide is one of the leading causes of death among young people after car accidents. She got help from teen mental health expert, Dr. Stan Kucher. The booklet has his stamp of approval. It took someone with the courage and dedication of Carol Cashin to actually say to me, listen Stan, we need to really get moving on this kind of support for families. And she was absolutely right. About 6,000 copies have been distributed to police, high schools and hospitals across Nova Scotia. It's also available online, a mother on a mission to spread the word. I really felt like I, I was being driven by my son. I, would, I knew that he would want others um, not to have to go through this. She may not have had a booklet when she needed it, but writing it has helped her to heal. And it's dedicated in his memory, so it's, it's, it's extremely personal. Elizabeth Chu, Hello, CBC News, Halifax. But up next, support for the family members left behind. When we can talk about mental illness, when we can talk about suicide in the same breath that we talk about heart disease and diabetes, then we will have succeeded. Our Live at Five house call explores a new resource designed to help Maritimers dealing with the effects of suicide. Stay with us. That story is next. Well, losing a child is every parent's worst nightmare. But when that death is the result of a suicide, the pain is often accompanied by many unanswered questions. One maritime parent has turned her personal tragedy into a resource to help other families. This Live at Five house call shares Carol's story now. Carol Cashin remembers her son Adam as being an outgoing, fun-loving 19-year-old. He loved riding his horse, playing sports and hanging out with friends. Sadly, in July of 2007, Adam took his own life. 
uh, indescribable, really. It, it's the unimaginable. It's uh, the shock is is amazing, and an immediate fog that you go through at the time. You just it's just a it's a disbelief. Following Adam's death, Carol says she experienced a roller coaster of emotions, including sadness, anger, and guilt. She tried to reach out and access support, but found the services lacking. The RCMP provided me with a victim services card, but that card basically just did not provide me with any support that I needed. And um, as the days went on, I, I just I really struggled trying to find help. To help fill the void, Carol developed a booklet titled Support After You Suicide. It has tips on dealing with grief and depression, as well as beginning the healing process. It also has advice for others on supporting survivors. Suicide is the second leading cause of death among young people. In Nova Scotia, eight to ten lives are lost each year. That may sound like a small number, but the reality is that for every young people, young person that dies by suicide, thousands of people are affected. The families, the communities, uh, it's a tragic, tragic kind of thing to think that a young person would take their own life. Dr. Stan Kucher holds the Sun Life Financial Chair in Adolescent Mental Health. He worked with Carol to develop the survivor's resource. He says while great strides have been made in breaking down the stigma surrounding suicide, there's still plenty of room for improvement. When we can talk about mental illness, when we can talk about suicide in the same breath that we talk about heart disease and diabetes, then we will have succeeded. Carol has been instrumental in having barriers erected along the McDonald Bridge in Halifax, the site where Adam took his life. If it prevents even one suicide, she says she'll consider her efforts a success. But for the families who are left behind, she hopes her publication will bring comfort. It gives permission for those that are, are being left behind to be able to talk and for others to talk with them. You know, it's, it's, it's really important. Although he's been gone for three years, Carol always keeps her son close by. She had Elmo tattooed on her inner arm in honor of Adam's nickname, a permanent reminder of a life cut too short. And to download a copy of the Youth Suicide Support Booklet or to find out more information about young people and mental health, go to www.teenmentalhealth. Dot org. And our thanks to Carol for sharing her story. I'm sure it's very difficult, but hats off to her for putting together that pamphlet for other people to use to help That's them through their loss. Important mm -hmm. information. Mm -hmm.